heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Welcome everyone to Mitchell's Presbyterian Church on this uh, Sunday, March 7th, our third Sunday in Lent. I'm Reverend Michael Klang, the covenant pastor here at Mitchell's. I'm so delighted that you've tuned in and joined us today on our YouTube channel, and I just hope and pray that the next half hour that we spend together will be a real blessing to you. Uh, if you have not been doing so, I, I would invite you to be intentional about this time that we spend together and, you know, maybe to create that little uh, sacred space in your home. Uh, light a candle, uh, open up the Bible, you know, just kind of calm your, your heart as we gather together and seek God's presence and gather with each other, you know, in a virtual way. Um, I do want to remind everybody that your session will be meeting this week, so we definitely want to keep them in our prayers and the pastor nominating committee as well as they continue to meet and search for that perfect person who's God's going to lead here to this most wonderful congregation. So united together, wherever we may be this day, let us now call ourselves to worship. Jesus, light of this world, Give us eyes to see as you see. As children of the light, we are called to what is good and right and true. Jesus, light of this world, give us eyes to see as you see. During Lent, we remember the events that led up to the crucifixion. Jesus had come to bring hope and light to the world, but at every step, there were those who could not accept the power of that light. He brought grace and forgiveness, but these gifts were often by, rejected by those filled with great love for other things. So let us now hear today from Mark's Gospel. We read in the Gospel of Mark, As Jesus was going on his way, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not commit murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not accuse anyone falsely, do not cheat, respect your father and mother. Teacher, said the man, ever since I was young, I have obeyed all of these commandments. Jesus looked straight at the man with love and said, you need only one thing more. Go and sell all you have and give the money to the poor and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the man heard this, gloom spread over his face, and he went away sad 
because he was very rich. When Jesus spoke the truth, there were, there were those who could not face its light, and they turned away. Every time one of these turned away, a little light that had come into the world was put out. Join us now in our hymn of adoration, number 150, Come Christians, Join to Sing, verses 1 and 2. Let us all sing. Trusting in the promise of grace, let us now pour out our hearts to God today. Healing God of majesty and glory, we are thirsty for your grace. You made a way for us in the wilderness, and still in our foolishness we go astray. We hide our eyes from your presence. We do not listen to your word. We are lifeless when we ought to dance and speechless when we ought to sing. Forgive us, O Lord. Speak peace to our fearful hearts. Strengthen our weak hands and make firm our feeble knees as we seek to follow in your holy way. Amen. Hear the good news. Friends, in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Join me now in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, illumine our hearts and minds as the scriptures are read and proclaimed, so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may see what is good and right and true. And seeing... Help us do what is pleasing to you so that your glory becomes visible in our words and deeds. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, our first lesson today is a First Testament lesson. We're going to read from the prophet Isaiah. I love these beautiful words, so just let them pour over you today and fill your imagination with hope. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in their wilderness, 
and streams in the desert, and burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Our second lesson is coming from Mark, and I'm going to read that uh, in, as I get into the sermon. So join me now again in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I think I shared with you all previously how my wife Tracy has gotten actively involved with a dog rescue group from Massachusetts called the Northeast uh, Coonhound Rescue Group. Uh, the founder of this group uh, became aware that a lot of hunting dogs were showing up in animal shelters in southern Virginia where, unfortunately, the kill rates were high, and while at the same time realizing that there was a big demand for these dogs in Massachusetts. So she put together a network that helps get these dogs from these shelters, vets them, and then transports them to Massachusetts for adoption. Now Tracy and I first became involved with the transportation end, but we soon realized that after vetting, there was often a delay in the ride up north, usually because the dog needed to recover from heartworm treatment or from spaying and neutering. And that's how we entered the world of fostering. Now, honestly, I was a bit reluctant in the beginning, and Tracy will tell you that I can still be a bit of an Eeyore at times about having all of these dogs, and I am working on that. But I will say, once you get them into the house, you know what happens. Your heart just melts with them as they start to learn your routine and you theirs. And well, all of this is going to be tested in a couple of weeks when we foster our first blind dog. We picked up this sweet dog from the shelter this past Monday, and his name, for now at least, is Weedy, because he was found wandering after getting deathly sick from eating wild marijuana plants. So I'll let you know how it goes. But in the meantime, it seemed ironic to me that word of this blind dog came the same day that I was reading today's gospel text about the blind man from Bethsaida. Always amazing to me how the Spirit seems to work. So hear these words from Mark today. Jesus and his disciples are traveling. So they came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his hands and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he said to him, or sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. Friends, this is the word of God, the stories of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Well, my mother lost her eyesight as a complication of her juvenile onset diabetes, but she never lost her faith. She loved to listen to the Bible being read, and she especially loved all of the healing stories. And though she died without regaining her sight, I believe that it was stories like this one that gave her inspiration and comfort on those days when she was struggling with her blindness. And while Mark probably inserted this story into his gospel as a literary technique to highlight the spiritual blindness of his disciples, who just verses earlier he had chastised when he said to them, Do you not have eyes to see and ears to hear? I believe that it has more to tell us today. Just like the desert in the Isaiah passage that rejoiced and bloomed with amazing flowers, God is in the business of wanting to transform us, to strengthen our weak hands, firm up our failing knees, to open our eyes so that we can start to see things as God sees them. But it's not always easy. 
So let me highlight two insights that I think are important in this story. First, we have to trust others. We know nothing about this blind man from Bethsaida. We don't know if he was young or old, had a family or not, or how long he had been blind. But what we do know is that he had to trust. We read that as Jesus and the disciples came into town, the people of the town brought this man to Jesus. He trusted his community to look out for his best interest. And knowing that a rumored healer had come to town, they did not fail, but made sure that he would be able to meet Jesus. Do we have trusted others who will look out for our interests when it comes to our transformation? Those who might push us at times to get us out of our comfort zone or those who might challenge us in our thinking to help us grow. Do we have others that we do this for? We are not made to do this work alone. Our story tells us that he then extended this trust to Jesus. After the community had brought him to him, Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Now, we don't know why Jesus chose to leave the village hand in hand with this blind man, but I tend to think it was so that Jesus could show this man that he could be trusted. My dad was so good at this with my mom. She was able to put complete trust in him that arm in arm, he would gently lead and guide her, calling out the smallest of obstacles in her path. I never saw her trip when he was guiding her. That's the picture I have with this scene. Proverbs tells us, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. In these times of transformation, we have to trust all the hands that are leading us, nudging us, guiding us, knowing that God is in the process of making our paths clear. Well, the second insight from this story is that we have to trust in the process, which is both messy and ongoing. After leading him out of the village, the first thing that Jesus does is to spit in his hand and put that saliva in the man's eyes. Now, this seems to be Jesus' model because in another healing story, Jesus first spits on the ground, makes a mud pie out of the saliva, and then places that on the man's eyes. Now, because this is Jesus, we seem to give him a pass on this, but come on, spitting and putting mud in people's eyes is pretty gross. I mean, I've been spit on and I've had mud thrown at at me and I will tell you, I don't like it. We don't get a response from the blind man, but I'm sure he must have wondered, I mean, what the heck? What is this mess? But being stuck in times of transformation, it is messy, isn't it? We want shortcuts through it, but that's not how it works. We all learned about this in school, but Google chrysalis video and you can remind yourself of the transformation that a caterpillar goes through on its way to becoming a butterfly. Thanks to modern cameras and technology you can watch in super slow motion the whole icky gooey and disgusting process. You would hope the poor caterpillar could do this another way but without sitting and struggling in that sticky mess the butterfly would never emerge. It's so hard though I've had my share of challenging times when you just go to bed praying that when you wake up, it'll all be better. But it's just not that easy. You lament, you pray, you go through counseling, you sit in the muck, maybe with mud and spit in your eye. And then, and only then, you start to emerge and you can finally sing with the psalmist. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Well, after rubbing the blind man's eyes with spit, Jesus asked him if he could see anything. And he responded, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. So Jesus laid hands on him again, and the man looked intently, and his sight was restored. 
Now, why it took Jesus two tries to complete this healing, we will never know. But it tells me that not only is this process messy, but it's also ongoing. Just like the insights that science has given us about our world and cosmos that keep changing as we discover more, so too does our thinking about God and what God is calling us to do. But that gets messy too. It's a drama that the disciples were experiencing. And as followers on the way, we are guaranteed to be challenged too. But what looks like trees walking eventually becomes people as the vision of the world is made clear by the power of the Holy Spirit. So on this third Sunday of Lent, are you sitting in the muck and mud with spit in your eye? Are you in the middle of an ongoing transformation? Are you being challenged to see things or people in a way that you haven't before? As we get closer and closer to emerging from this pandemic, how will we have been transformed as individuals? How will we have been transformed as a church? As we look at getting back to normal, What will a transformed normal look like? Our blind man received his sight after trusting in his community and in God because transformation comes to us through trusting others, trusting the process, and in our willingness to allow God to continually shape and form us. May it be so today. Thanks be to God. Well, as our response to the scriptures being read and proclaimed, let us affirm together what we believe by reciting together our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In plenty or in want, All that we have is a gift from God. Thank you so much, everyone, for continuing to be so faithful and sending in your tithes and offerings. For those we received this week, let us pray now our prayer of dedication. We ask your blessings on these gifts, offered in faith and given with joy. May they be an outward sign of your mercy and grace and a witness to your overflowing goodness toward all creation. In Christ we pray. Amen. Well, as we remember the psalmist who tells us to seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. So as we come to this time of prayer, let's once again just pause for 30 seconds and take some deep breaths and let all the tension and anxiety that maybe we've been feeling this week just Go away right now and just breathe in the calming presence of the Spirit of our living God. So let's breathe. God, our provider, give wisdom to our hearts and understanding to our minds as we come to you in prayer this morning, saying, Lord, in your mercy, create in us a clean heart. We pray for the church, set in the world to show how people belong together and how your gifts are given to be shared. Grant that as we feel for the rejection and voice lessons of other 
we may meet Christ in them and bear witness to his transforming love. Lord, in your mercy, create in us a clean heart. God of wisdom, we pray for the leaders of our community, our state, our nation, and our world. Guide them that they might make decisions that are for the good of all people, especially the least among us. Lord, in your mercy, create in us a clean heart. We pray for the communities in which we live and work, for people under stress and unable to deal with their difficulties, for those who seek comfort in ways which bring no help, for all who are fearful. Give us grace to show by our concern and action how each is loved and valued by you. Lord, in your mercy, create in us a clean heart. God of grace, we pray for all the doctors and nurses and medical providers and first responders and all the public servants and volunteers who are providing care and help and working hard to get us vaccinated. Help them to be patient in times of stress and provide them the rest and respite that they need. Lord, in your mercy, create in us a clean heart. We pray for our congregation. Comfort us and remind us that we are the body of Christ in our world and our community. Help us to proclaim your word and lead us by the power of your spirit to seek out and provide care to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, create in us a clean heart. And we lift up those on our prayer list and the concerns on our individual hearts and minds today. We know that you hear all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and even the ones we cannot put into words. We ask that all of our prayers in the name of the one who taught us the prayer that we all now say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of dedication today is number 310, Jesus, the very thought of thee. We're singing verses 1 and 3. So let's now sing. Do you have a little spit in your eye this morning? Is God transforming you today? Trust the process. Trust that God has got this and has got your back and will work with you through it. You guys are amazing. You're so, so amazing. I hope you have an awesome week and know that you are so, so loved. I send you today this virtual hug and this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. God's shalom today and every day. Amen.